News contributors. I want to ask you first about the Newtown families uh, and, and the role that they have played. It sort of seems, Kirsten, like there's been like a coordinated media effort uh, on the part of these families to sit down. They did 60 Minutes on Sunday. Uh, they talked to People Magazine. The president then flew to Connecticut, then flew the family members back to, to Washington so that they could uh, lobby lawmakers this week ahead of that important vote on the Hill yesterday. And, and we've just gotten word within the last couple of minutes that the president has invited one of the mothers of one of the Newtown victims to deliver his weekly radio address on his behalf. The first time that anybody uh, has done that other than Vice President Biden, who did it once. What do you think about the families, the way that they're being used? Are they being exploited in this case? Is there anything inappropriate going on? I don't think there's anything inappropriate going on. It's a common thing that I both you know, whether it's Republican or Democratic presidents do. Uh, people try to humanize stories. Uh, these are grown-ups. They're not children, and they're making a choice to speak out and, and share their, their feelings based on their personal experience. So I, I think that that's newsworthy. Uh, in, and I think that um, it's true that the media does have, a, they clearly have a bias in favor of gun control. Uh, I, I don't as much ascribe that to them being liberal as I do them living in urban environments. Most people who live in urban environments support gun control. It's not like, you know, if they if they were based in Montana, they might have a different perspective. But um, I, I think that, that that is the perspective they're coming from. And it's newsworthy to cover what the president is doing. Judy, I'm guessing as far as the Newtown families go and our hearts go out to them every single day, uh, that they're quite quite happy as long as their message is getting out there. They don't really mind, you know, whether they're being used by the mainstream media or not. But I'm just wondering your thoughts. Uh, is the media sort of just being an impartial observer on this or are they being sort of active participants? I think that the mainstream media are actually reflecting where mainstream America is on this issue. Ninety percent of Americans want some kind of background checks, universal background checks. This is a no-brainer as far as the country is concerned. And what's interesting is that against the NRA, which we have covered in great detail for a long, long time, how they've mobilized their base, how they've gone from four to five million members since the focus on gun control and gun restrictions began in earnest after Newtown, we finally have a new element, which is the impassioned minority of these families coming forward in a way that families have never done before as a group, as individuals, and saying enough. And this message, which is new, and it counters the other minority, which is the NRA in the country, four to five million members, and now five, this is speaking to people, and it is genuine news, and therefore it's appropriate that it be covered as such. Kirsten, uh, Judy mentions the, the polling, the 90 percent number uh, that came out in the Quinnipiac poll, I believe, last week, the number of Americans who are in favor uh, of expanded background checks. And you have to imagine that that number includes gun owners and Republicans as well uh, who are in on that. I, I just wonder, though, because there are an awful lot of gun rights, Second Amendment advocates who who are probably watching the coverage of this of this story this week, seeing how all of this plays out and wondering where is anybody uh, who's who's out there who's giving our point of view on this, who's talking about the importance of Second Amendment rights. You come from Alaska, a state, a, a gun culture state. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that people out there who are frustrated that their voices are not a part of this conversation right now, at least in the media, that they that they actually have a point? Uh, certainly, there are people that are frustrated. But look, I, I feel like Wayne Lapierre, who is the you know head of the NRA, has been on a lot, and and he has made his case. And frankly, he doesn't have a very good case. And uh, at some point, you do have to say you're, you're making claims that aren't true. You're claiming that Obama wants to basically overthrow the Second Amendment and take away your guns completely false. At some point, he shouldn't be allowed to say that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not, you know, when, when, when the president wants to get background checks, which, as Judy said, the majority of the country supports, that is a minor regulation, frankly, uh, that is completely constitutional. And so, like, so Lane LaPierre has had his say, but unless he wants to be an honest broker and actually enter the debate and stop saying things that aren't true, I don't have any problem with 
with the media not giving him a chance to say anything. All right, so both of you seem to be on the same page as far <laughs> as this, uh, and that's fine, but Judy, I'll give you the last word. Well, I, I'll just say this, since Kirsten and I agree on this one. Look, if you've got people who are mobilized for the first time, whether it's Mayor Bloomberg or the Newtown families, and you have a new message, as opposed to Wayne LaPierre's old message, which is, by the way, a changing message, because he used to be for universal background checks before he was against it, uh, let's hear it. And I'm glad the mainstream media are paying attention to these families. I think it's appropriate. All right. Uh, thank you both. Kirsten Powers, thank, thank you. you. Judy Miller, thank, thank you. you. And I'll be filling in for John when I host Fox News Watch this week.